Welcome to this video that shows off some features of Microsoft Azure Web Jobs. Web Jobs is a way for you to run your code as simple batch processing in the Azure platform and it is the, a feature which is now generally available in Microsoft Azure. My name is Magnus Martinson and I'm a Microsoft Azure Most Valuable Professional and you can easily reach me if you have any follow-up questions either online or and the email below. I did a previous recording called the Hello World Web Job where I go through all of the fundamentals of, of Azure Web Jobs, how to set one up and how to deploy one into Azure. This is not that video. I urge you to go and look at that video first if you haven't done so. I will continue with showing off some features in a separate demo. In this video, I will show you how to run web jobs on a schedule or as tr manual on-demand triggering. So I have a web job deployed right now. It's uh, there and it's as you can see it runs on a schedule. I just removed all the uh, all of the uh, invocations from the logs so there's there are no invocations logged right now. The first method that you saw there briefly is triggered by entering a message. It has a queue trigger, so I will put a message hello, into the queue here. That and we can do another one. Another one. So these messages wind up in a queue and they've already been picked up because I've scheduled my scheduler to pick them up every one minute. So that means that we should have new invocations available. Uh, if I go in and look at my web job. There we go, there they are. So hello and another one, they have, they have both uh, fired uh, from the schedule uh, some seconds ago. So they have run. And um, it's kind of easy to deploy on these schedules. You can go, go and drill into it first. The schedules are available in the Azure scheduler right, let's see, there little clock there with an arrow on it is the scheduler and this is the schedule that I'm running my job collection of schedules and inside of it I have one job to every minute run this post action to as you can see something which runs on the kudu site the Azure dashboard for my website you can see that it calls API triggered web jobs manual trigger run with this uh, authentic authorization the basic auth authorization header here so this schedule is the thing that causes my messages to be picked up and processed if I look quick yeah there you go now we can see that there is a message now it's been picked up again by the scheduled uh, run which means that there are new, new invocations there. Yes, there we go. So I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you also how to create this schedule as you deploy your web job. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable this schedule now so that I will also be able to show you the triggered invocations. So this is now disabled, the schedule, it means that it will no longer make those calls to uh, invoke my methods uh, over and over again. If I wanted to deploy this code uh, on a schedule, all I need to do is actually change the values inside of this, this uh, JSON file, this configuration file here. Now I can either hand ma manually edit this thing if I wanted to, but there's also, it's kind of actually easier to just delete this file and uh, go back and say, I'd like to publish as, as, as Azure Web Job once more. If I do, then it will go back and, and give me the, uh, this, this dialog box here where I can check, where I can, uh, choose to say I want to run this continuously, I want to run it on a schedule, I want to run it on demand. On the schedule um, means that I can say, if, is this a one-time job that runs? Is it, is it no, a never-ending reoccurring job, for instance? And uh, the way I deployed it is that I set it down to recur every one minute. Uh, just for demos, of course, it's usually not 
required, not, not something that you need maybe every hour or something, maybe nightly at a specific time, right? So uh, I'll, I'll just um, set it actually to a recurring job, no end date, every minute. That was the configuration that I had. And when I do that, I get the option to continue to publish this change, but I won't right now, because as you saw, it's already published. I get this settings file with the settings that I chose uh, correct. So if I now go and say, actually do go and, and say that I want to publish this, I'm not going to do it, but but I do it from here and then I go do web publish and all of these settings will be entered into my scheduler in Azure. So that's how you do scheduled web jobs triggering. Now, if you don't want to do scheduled web jobs triggering and you have a queue here uh, and you deploy this thing, it's going to automatically trigger, of course, on this queue trigger here. So whenever, whenever there is a message in the queue called queue uh, the, in my storage account, it's going to trigger this method. If I don't want to do that, I can use an attribute called no automatic trigger. And I have another method down in there down there as well that I'm going to decorate with the same. That means that I can now I can now put messages onto my queue, several ones, and let them be there prepared for me to fire, but I have to manually trigger the um, the web job. And this is actually how I deployed the code that you saw or the uh, web jobs that were deployed in the in the portal before. So I deploy them as no automatic trigger, which means I can trigger them on a schedule. I can also trigger them manually from the portal, and uh, but they won't be automatically triggered by the fact that there are messages on the queue. I can go and insert new messages. New message one. New message two, etc. And queue up work on the queue, which is going to happen eventually. So these messages are now in the queue called queue, the one which my web job in Azure is listening on. But it's not triggering because I disabled the schedule. So there's nothing happening here. So the only way for me to now trigger this thing would actually be to manually invoke it. There's no way for me to reach into the or trigger by the queue with this in this scenario, unless I start the scheduler because the scheduler will trigger the mess, uh, the queue as as if it was running continuously. So those messages that are on the queue cannot be received without the schedule at this time, the way I deployed it. If instead I want to manually activate or manually trigger my web, web job methods, it's completely possible to do so from the dashboard here. Uh, my functions are listed and uh, I can, for instance, if I wanted to invoke the one which takes a parameter that I called one parameter, I can go in and I say I want to run the function and I can run it from the dashboard, say for instance, from the dashboard, right? Hit run. And this is now uh, run from the dashboard. And I can go and see the result of this invocation from the dashboard, which is just like any other invocation, but I uh, ran this from the dashboard and the result of the run is also displayed down here in the output window. This is the uh, log message that I write. The other one, which does not have any parameters at all, no parameters, is the method call. Um, it doesn't take any input parameters at all, but I can still go and run it by saying run function. And the result should be, sometimes it takes a little while for the dashboard to show this. Oh, there you go. There it is. So I can go and check it and see and see what it did. It just writes out the yes, I have been run uh, log message. So I can manually go and trigger my web jobs whenever I like. And the web jobs that I did trigger in this case was the one, one which I just specified the value of the string message for the queue message there instead of having an actual queue automatically triggering it because it's no automatic trigger, remember? The uh, other one has doesn't have any additional parameters. It only has the text writer log parameter, which is uh, a, an SDK parameter 
that you can specify to, to gain access to this log that you saw. I could toggle the log output and see that I have run my method in the cloud. Now the reason for having a non-triggerable, no parameter method could still be kind of, there could, could be still be many uses for this. For instance, if you wanted to uh, log on to a database and do maintenance, uh, search for specific files and do things that doesn't specifically ha necessarily have to have any input parameters. Uh, that's a reason where you could use a parameterless method like this or you know, without any web jobs SDK related parameters that you could see in this scenario up here where this queue trigger is active. So the fact that I put no automatic trigger on a parameterless method means that uh, web jobs will still consider this a web job method, only that it doesn't have any input parameters. There you go. That's how to do scheduled and uh, on demand manually triggered web job invocations. If you have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to call me.